Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we are going to take a look at how we can make a really awesome concept sculpt of this like lion bear character in around half an hour or so. And we are starting off with a base mesh, which is fantastic. This is made by one of our top creators, Maria, who made this fantastic lion. What we are going to be showing you here is that you don't really have to start from scratch every single time. You're not starting from a sphere. We can start with a really high quality asset and we can turn this asset here into basically anything we want to, be it a lion or a dog or whatever. Now, everything on the Flip Mobile store is 50% uh, off for the next uh, week and a half until July 1st. So uh, grab this with a code SUMMER to get 50% off. So starting off in ZBrush, we have just... We just turn off certain parts of the model, like we turn off the muscle and different parts of different parts of the character, just which just makes it a bit more like bear like or creature like. Just separating out the teeth and the eyes and just so just so it's a bit easier for us to sculpt. The huge advantage of using this model here specifically is that we don't have to worry about anatomy. We can worry about the design. And particularly if you're doing concept art, you really, really don't want to worry about technical things like anatomy early on. Now the nice thing about a base mesh like like this is that I mean I, I don't, talked about this before. This is like by far the best um, quadruped anatomy like I've ever by seen. Far, you know, it's it's an awesome reference, but more so it's a great starting point. Um, whether you're doing something with skin or without skin, it just takes away a lot of the guesswork. Yeah, you can use this for uh, for general anatomy reference as well, just because it's it's fantastic. Yeah. But particularly for production, if I was doing anything with animals, I would just use this because uh, animal anatomy is genuinely hard, and it's we keep talking about it's quite similar to human anatomy, but it's also quite different. It is like it shares all the same name, all same muscles and stuff, but proportion wise, it's so different. You can't just you can't translate knowledge of human anatomy directly into no. animal anatomy it can help with some parts but but you know not if you need to make a finished piece yes yeah, so we just went over with the inflate parts a little bit here just because i know there are some actual holes in the model and that's just because it this doesn't have skin or fat or anything like <laughs> that so this is what it looks like with dynamesh uh, we um, we're going to dynamesh it a bit later on as well just want to test it out here The nice thing here is that, you know, anatomy for free. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, we have all the insertions, all the origins of the muscles, the right proportions. So right here, we just took away, I don't know, two weeks of production time. <laughs> and then we can just get started on, on the concept itself. It's like, especially in production, no one's really interested in sitting with something like this. And I mean, maybe for a learning experience, but like production itself isn't interested in you spending two weeks getting into creature anatomy just so you can make a line for them they just want it immediately so if you can throw uh you know if you can like just buy this this line real quick and have a base for your anatomy that's like it's so valuable and just trying out a few different proportions with it this is the cool thing about this now it's nice and low poly and you can just use the move brush to just drastically change the shape and again, most animals, at least quadrupeds like this, will share the same base in terms of anatomy. So between animals, if it's a cat or a bear or whatever, it, it is mostly proportional. And the fact that one is a bear and one is a cat, that's also, <laughs> also pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty crazy when you look at like li lions and tigers, their, their neck is crazy beefy, you know, because they actually have a really long neck that they need to hold up. So there's a lot of muscle there. Um, so you can really work with that and make some really cool stuff there. We're moving the tail up as well. There is an actual skeleton inside because uh, Maria is so detailed when she's working, which is almost a problem <laughs> because now I have, a, I have a spare tail in here, which I'm doing the most hacky thing ever. I'm just scaling it down and just moving it on the inside of the body. There you go. You could delete it, but honestly, in, this here is not for final production. This here is for concepting. This here is just so that in half an hour you can present one concept to a client and they're gonna they're, they're able to visualize what this can look like in a movie if you're doing this with c spheres or anything else there is absolutely no way you can make something in half an hour i mean of course after half an hour it's still going to be rough but one thing people misunderstand about concept art is concept art is idea art you are mocking up ideas you could in theory do it with like news clip or 
newspaper clipboards. It's really just about getting ideas out. And if you're struggling with the anatomy at the ideas phase, mm-hmm. you're just wasting incredibly valuable time. Like once you start to move into actual production, then uh, if you have a rushed concept piece, like a 3D concept piece like this that doesn't have a good anatomy base, then you're going to have to work harder to fix that, obviously. So starting off with a base like this just saves everyone time. And like, like Henning says, it's, it's an idea phase. Like you don't want to sit down and explain to your supervisor why you didn't make like 15 concepts in the past week because you were struggling with the anatomy. It's like, well, I, I, yeah, we have this base and then you can just bang it out half an hour to an hour. And then you have, you know, different characters that you can like, then you can play with the proportions and play with the, the feel of the character or the creature instead of worrying about specific insertions. Yeah, here's kind of like a little secret which nobody really talks about is that Concept artists and illustrators, they don't actually know anatomy that well. Sure, they have a pretty decent base, but they're more like, oh, the tube thingies of the arms and the abs, and you have some some spinal erectors on the back and stuff. They know the general shapes, but they don't actually know necessarily know the specific muscles because it's not that relevant that they know it. They, they're way more interested in getting the shapes down and making it look interesting because they're all like six people in the world who can actually critique their anatomy that carefully <laughs> so if you're doing something like this it's far more important that your design is working well than the anatomy is is 100 percent though of course you should also strive to have good anatomy not saying that yeah i mean you know the better your knowledge of anatomy is the more you know how to break it yeah and exactly like what to actually do that looks that still works and what doesn't work yeah but you know really quickly i don't know span of five minutes or so yeah. um then we tweak the proportions quite drastically you have a very different kind of zombie looking bear lion thing uh which you know you could present it in this stage but like okay do we want these kinds of proportions and like obviously if you're just at a proportion stage or like a silhouette stage then you're not going to need this amount of detail just muscle wise but if you use this as a base and like, oh yeah, cool, let's go with something like that, then you have an incredible base to work from. So your next iteration, you know, is going to be your turnaround time is just going to be so much faster. Yeah, it's really cool when you can just show like thirty different versions to supervisor, and they're like, how the hell did you do this? And you're like flipping on the store. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Maria. That's yeah, how. Maria. Thanks, Maria. The cool thing about this as well is that it, it really has a strong skeleton underneath as well, which you can, uh, you know, you can have the skin on top or not, or you can just expose the, the skeleton entirely. Here it's a bit of a mix, mix, but it, it just means what you're doing now is kind of like designing on top. You don't really don't have to worry about the structure and the low frequency volume. That's hard. It's really, really hard to get that right. That's what we see when... Uh, when uh, we've been teaching a quadruped course at the animation workshop and they, they have a it, it's basically make this character here and it takes them it takes them like a few days to get up to this the level we're at at the end of this video just because they're starting from a ceasefire rig or a mm-hmm. very loose base mesh in maya we are just cheating like crazy here yeah and, and not to say that oh yeah we're better than students it's like you know it's just you start from a different base yeah it's like of course you should be able to well, maybe you shouldn't necessarily be able to do like an ecroche of a lion to this level. Uh, you should probably focus on surface anatomy primarily um, if you're a creature or character artist. Um, so that at least you know how to break it and you know why the muscles are where they are. But even if you don't know anatomy that well, but you have an idea of proportions and what you want it to feel like, if you start with a base like this, you can still get very far and make it look very, very convincing. Yeah, you really can. This is also, you know, like you're saying here, nobody can do this kind of stuff from imagination. If you were to do a sculpt like this, you would have to spend weeks on it just looking into reference and really just refining what you're looking at. Yeah, it's, it's, um, reference is so important. I think we should make an effort now to actually talk about reference all the time. Yeah, it's really, it's really hard to make these kind of anatomy models as well as a starting point because you just have to look into obscure books online and maybe like YouTube videos where you're dissecting animals and all these weird things. So uh, the fact that somebody's already done this job for you is, yeah. is so... Invaluable. 
like right now I'm working on a, like an anatomy model, a human anatomy model. And, you know, it's just the thing. You just got to look at cadavers. You know, one thing is looking at anatomy books, which is basically a stylized version of anatomy that someone has interpreted and then put down in a book. Uh, like a hundred years ago. Yeah, like a hundred years ago. And, you know, updated knowledge and whatever. But once you start looking at cadavers, which may or may not be your thing, uh, <laughs> hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> um, you actually, you just get a very different perspective on on anatomy. So it like it gives you a different feel for where muscles actually sit within the body, and also gives you a very different perspective on the human body. It's it's very strange to look at. <laughs> yeah, and uh, with humans, there's a lot of there are a lot of resources available for this. But for animals, it's very hard to actually find good reference mm. for anatomy. We have a few books on the subject, but there really isn't anything like like for humans. Oh, there's that university in the US. They have like this online resource. I can't remember the name. Just like if you search for quadruped anatomy university or something, maybe you can find it. I can't remember what it's called. I have no idea. Yeah, this is a really, really tight anatomy resource that's free online. Um, they show they have horses, uh, lions ducks which is not quadrupedal but an animal i i don't know yeah they've got a bunch of varied stuff there it's a really really good resource no people are screaming at you being tell me more <laughs> <laughs> learn to google yeah that's what, this is what you're getting because <laughs> i i don't actually remember so if you do find it let us know <laughs> like this kind of stuff the inside of of the arm right this is one of the areas where maybe in if you haven't looked at anatomy reference you would make it very tubular instead of having that gap in there where the biceps and the triceps is which is hard to know if you haven't looked at reference but again with a reference like this it kind of comes for free and and i think that's one of the things where it's we always advocate that you should look at reference and you you know you should know your fundamentals because that means that ultimately you'll be a better artist but at some point, you do run into the fact that, I mean, you just have to, let's say, quote unquote, cheat. And I think a lot of artists are uncomfortable with that. But the fact is that this is how the industry works. Like, there are some crazy people that sculpt everything by hand. Seabrars, uh, they use HG geometry and they do everything, every pore meticulously. And good for you, you know. that's It's cool that, that that's a skill that people have. But... In production, there is no time for that. Like, it is about how fast can we get this asset out of the door. So having a pre-made bash, base mesh, whether it's a human or a lion or whatever it is, that's, that's sort of the de facto, uh, the default. Yeah, what I find to be interesting is coming up with, with interesting designs and refining it. I don't really sort of find it interesting to just struggle with volumes. It's so frustrating, the first stages. We're kind of skipping the stages where everything looks like crap in the stage. Obviously, mm. you have like the five minutes where it's, it's just miserable. <laughs> but when you're starting out with it, C-Sphere, you have the moment where you just, you just feel like a fraud, like a complete and utter fraud. And sometimes that lasts. Sometimes that never <laughs> goes away. Like, especially if your base isn't solid. Like, if you've made mistakes along the way when you're doing your initial sculpt for, you know, your anatomy and your, your proportions then that's going to haunt you further down the line as well. So that's, again, I don't know, there's just so many pros to, to using a base mesh, I think. And like nowadays, I don't, really, I don't really start any sculpts from nothing. Like unless we're doing a tutorial, like we did where you're sculpting the face. Okay, we start from a sphere to give you an, uh, like a perspective on how to do it. Like if you're doing it in clay, work up all the planes. But if I'm working on anything as a personal project, then... I'm I'm using not only a lot of reference but also base meshes because they I just don't want to spend the time and the effort like doing a lot of anatomy research getting refreshed on some anatomy things because I've definitely forgotten a lot of it. <laughs> yep. So you know that I feel that is a waste of my time. Yeah, but it also just depends what you want to get out. Exactly. of Exactly. Like for, for I think for the two of us, like I just want to make cool stuff. But if there are also like there's definitely an argument for you know you want to learn it and you want to be hardcore and you know, all that kind of stuff. But you also reach a point where you really want to reprioritize different things. Yeah. And there's definitely people that can do, like, they can do the anatomy really well and the design part really well. Um, I can't. I, like, I just, I want to focus on whatever I have fun with. And, you know, I, like, at this point, my anatomy is, like, it has a, it's at a decent level where I can, like, manipulate and, like, play around with it. But I couldn't make something like this from scratch. It would no. take too long and like I, it's just crazy yeah i did this some years ago and i was looking at the the final model of this and i was being like 
this looks this this took me two weeks less time to do <laughs> the other one was more refined but this yeah. year actually had a better foundation just mm. because the starting point was better yeah one thing i would really recommend if you want to become a creature artist and you want to keep doing this for for games or film whatever it is i would highly recommend that you do not do your own original concepts i'm sure we'll do a separate video on this but the hard thing about doing your own original concept is that concepting is a skill it's a whole separate skill yeah it's a skill as important as like a language it's it's not like oh you know seabrush now you can design no it's it's like a non-transferable skill in a way it's so tricky yeah. Of course, it's really fun to do these kind of sculpts and you doodle around. But if you want to do good character art, I would really recommend that you get permission from a concept artist to mm. use their work. Yeah, because like the thing is, most people that do that solely do character art or like concept art and, and illustration, um, that's what they specialize in. So they're just a lot better. You know, it's one of the, I think we've talked about before. Like, it's a really hard pill to swallow if you want to do want to do characters. I also want to do a concept for characters. Like, you gotta make up your mind. I think at some point because both of those are highly specialized. And it might just, in the end, it might up hurting you that you try to do a little, like a little too much at the same time. Plus, uh, the fact is that being a concept artist is probably the hardest thing in the entire industry. <laughs> yeah. Being a character model is pretty damn hard as well, but like concept art is a whole nother level. Yeah. It is, it, it's kind of like the reason is if you look at what responsibilities they have, if, if, you, if you have a concept artist and he or she does a bad job, now the entire concept for the movie or film or, or sorry, game is going to suffer. If you, you know, which is really, really bad. If you have a bad character model, you know, somebody could take over that model and, you know, there are, now it's one character, which is, isn't great. But for concept art, particularly for like big directional stuff, you're just screwing up so much. Yeah. But it's really cool to see like how quick, you know, we've gotten to a really solid point just by having a, a really cool base mesh. I'm also just going over this point and just sculpting skin. It's something I see a lot of people, they kind of forget about. Yeah. Just take the, the, ecro the crochet sculpt and just yeah, like leave it at that. But just realize that everything has skin on top. Even, you know, even if you're talking like a Chernobyl <laughs> crazy person with radiation or, you know, whatever it is, or like even if this character is going to have a lot of fur on top of it, you want to have skin underneath because it adds a lot of volume, adds a lot of wrinkles. It's real, a really important step, which keep, people keep forgetting. Even zombie bear lions have skin. Yeah, they even skin, have skin, fat, and gravity. You know, that's another part of skin. It's like when it's great that you, it's great to make skin and fat, but if you forget that gravity also pulls on that, that's gonna make it look weird. So, you know, depending on what your character or creature has been through, um, might be more or less droopy. Yeah, we could age this character up by, in like. 10 years just by adding some droopy skin yeah and of course this is a zombie bear he has been in zombie bear fights so you know just adding a bit of character this is for you morton thanks for a little, little a little scars too <laughs> is it like caged bear fights caged zombie? oh bear yeah fights? yeah it probably is somebody put them in in, in cages and no i like bets would win it's a mba mixed bear arts <laughs> That's awful. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a series about that. No, it's fine when it's zombie bears. They can be messed up. That probably makes sense. It was like you were talking about the Nazis at one point with like Nazis with evil scars and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, fun little tangent. The Nazis used to have like duels with each other, so they would have like all these crazy scars on their faces. So like sword fights. So maybe this guy here was. A Nazi bear. He was like, there was a Nazi riding the bear, and they were in sword fights. And uh, that is how you decide a character <laughs> in Zebra. You see Maria's base mesh. <laughs> yeah, that's the back. That's the backstory for it. Backstory. Yes, we we really hope you, you we really hope this hair has been useful for you. And make sure to check out Maria's uh, model in on the Flip Models Marketplace, which is fifty percent off for next week and a half. So thank you so much for watching.